Good afternoon, everybody. Today, the United Nations Security Council voted overwhelmingly to sanction Iran for its continued failure to live up to its obligations. Sanctions are very serious. Sanctions are literally an act of war. When you prevent certain goods and services going into a country, it's like a blockade. The text calls for expanding Iran's arms embargo. And international monitoring of Iranian ships in international waters. It includes waters. a travel ban, an asset freeze for individuals and companies. The conversation today was nothing more than war propaganda on why we have to get ready to bomb the Iranians. The Iranian government continues to undermine the MPT and the peace that it protects, then Iran will find itself more isolated, less prosperous, and less secure. In the framework of justice and respect, we would like to negotiate. If someone would like to come and force things upon us without justice, then the answer is clear. Sometime in the future, historians will have concluded that World War III has already begun before this episode was broadcast on the web. You may be wondering what on earth Marco's smoking, so let me explain. I was running off into the field. See this? Yep. I got a guy running, uh, throwing a weapon. Smoke him. At one time, the concept of war was throwing rocks. It then advanced in a series of stages to guns, bombs, and then nukes. H minus three, two, one, zero. bunch of countries with aligned interests banded together to fight a different group of countries. Not that the allies were in any way friends. They shared a common enemy or enemies and a consortium of sorts got created. In World Wars 1 and 2, the teams were obvious. You didn't need a scorecard. Today, that's all changed. War now appears to consist of at least five separate components. Military, terrorism, financial, trade, and economic. One also needs to take into account civil war. Each subcomponent has its own set of allies. Take any country, and it will be at some stage of war with just about any other country. Here are a few examples of how confusing this new definition of war can be. Well, China and the United States aren't bonding so well these days. In fact, new data shows China is dumping billions of dollars in U.S. bonds. China is at war with the United States financially and economically, but not militarily, yet. A February 9, 2010 Reuters article headline reads, China People's Liberation Army Officers Urge Economic Punch Against U.S. The subheading gets even more interesting. Senior Chinese military officers have proposed that their country boost defense spending, adjust People's Liberation Army deployments, and possibly sell some U.S. bonds to punish Washington for its latest round of arms sales to Taiwan. 
In short, this article discusses the Chinese military's desire to punish the U.S. economically. Iran and Russia are getting closer as they carry out joint military exercises. Russia was once vehemently opposed to the possibility of U.S. involvement in Iran. But now it's not. The Financial Times posted an article on their website, also dated February 9, 2010, with the following headline. Russia says West's fears over Iran are valid. The article quotes Nikolai Patrushev, secretary of the Presidential Security Council, as saying that there was a limit to how much diplomacy could be used to solve the crisis. The Speaker of Ukraine's parliament was either expecting rain or knew trouble was coming. When the rain came, it poured eggs. This is a filibuster, Ukrainian style. Russia is at odds with the U.S. over the addition of the Ukraine to NATO, and military war has recently broken out between Russia and Ukraine over delivery of natural gas. Confused? Let's keep going. The U.S. is at war militarily against Afghanistan, which is secretly being supported by Pakistan, supposedly a U.S. military ally. Israel is in a virtual state of war with the entire Middle East militarily and from terrorism, but seems fine on the economic, financial, and trade front, in large part because of its protected status as a U.S. proxy. Large holders of U.S. dollars are engaged in a form of financial war with America. They feel cheated by the continual degradation of the greenback and the debasement of their dollar-based wealth. If countries such as Portugal, Italy, Greece, or Spain should default on their sovereign debt, they risk military war with the holders of those debts. There is a precedent. After World War I, the reparations imposed on Germany proved a hurdle that the country could not overcome. The country began debasing its currency, hyperinflation ensued, and then came the rise of Adolf Hitler, which led to World War II. As you can gather, the matrix of the various elements of war, as defined by Marcos Take, is exponential and encompasses virtually the entire planet. Unfortunately, it probably will get worse. Economic, financial, and trade war will, with virtual certainty, lead to military war. The question is how every country will align and on which dimensions. I argue that we are already well into World War III and that while it does not appear so yet, it will soon become obvious. All we can do is hope that sanity somehow prevails and the ball of confusion, also known as Earth, does not blow itself to smithereens. Further compounding things in the U.S. is the probability that we are already in the early stages of a civil war. The young are pitted against the old via social security, the races are boiling over, and the boys club in Washington, D.C. is at war with all of us. So, what do you think? The purpose of this series is to bring what may initially appear as utterly confusing national and global events into a more focused perspective. If you think I got it wrong, I sincerely welcome and encourage you to take me on. Thanks for watching. Iran continued to defy the UN by refusing to answer questions about its nuclear program. Saddam Hussein has no intention of cooperating with the United Nations. Iranians are moving forward with their nuclear program quicker than expected. Irrefutable evidence that Saddam continues to hide weapons of mass destruction. We ultimately are headed towards a military confrontation. With two carrier strike groups in the Gulf, we're sending clear messages to friends and adversaries alike. States like these and their terrorist allies constitute an axis of evil arming to threaten the peace of the world.